you'd come to a, a very posh area of Masindi, which is on the hill, and very big houses, uh, with beautiful gardens and uh, lots of space to live in and so on. They all would be for the British and the English, who would probably be judges or uh, headmasters or doctors or lawyers or you know, in very senior positions. And they would have their own servants, they would have car parking you know, for their garages and so on. And then if you came down from, from the hill to sort of middle area, you'll find all the Indians living together. And because I mentioned to you earlier, the majority of the Indians settled in Uganda were Gujaratis, there were a few Punjabis. Um, so you'd have that distinct area where you'd only see Indians there. If you, if you walked in the town, there was all other the Indians would get together and you know, having a chat, or the women would having a, a small chat outside there, the, what we call the veranda, <laughs> sit outside uh, and talk about, you know, everything that goes around in, in, in the small town. And then if you go down uh, into the, the sort of left side of Masindi, you'd find, you come to a shanty town and the Africans would, would live there. And, you know, they would not have proper water supply and um, uh, their the homes would be very shanty, a lot of children, uh, there's no proper uh, facilities and also cleaning those areas and so on. So we'd have three distinct areas and I think they still exist. If you, even if you go to Kampala, you'll see three distinct areas. So, and and the, what British cleverly did was to use the Indian or the Asian community to communicate with the Africans. And the Africans would communicate, use the Indians to communicate with the white, the British. Uh, you know, that's, that's how those three distinct uh, areas and, and the, how the, the British used the Indian community. They would not have a direct link uh, with the Africans. And the Africans would not have a direct link with the uh, with the white. The other thing, if you look at the salary structure or the pay structure of any organization which exists in anything from schools to hospitals to wherever, you'll find there's three scales of pay. Uh, the, uh, say a white person would get say a hundred pounds for doing that job and the same job an Indian would do it for 60 pounds maybe and an African would do it for around 20-25 pounds. So they have this this sort of scale even though uh, the skills required would be the same, whether it's done by an Indian or by an African or by the white person. So, you know, uh, this was ingrained uh, in, in the society for so many years. Very similar to apartheid system in South Africa. 